Raider players on DRX. She just doesn't play the jet. Dashes in. All right, Ban is going to be lurking right up in the front, but he's already taken out by Buzz. Oh, the tags are so good from the Sova. Allows Buzz to just get free kills left and right. They don't even need the lockdown. They don't need anything. Just their bread and butter set place. Yeah, so far so good. T1, can they swing out? Can they get these picks? They need to. And they'll do whatever they can, but this is not looking good. Buzz oh, good Buzz. for four. He's trying to get the ace. Can he get oh! it at the ace? That's how you end a half. DRX up nine to three. Closing it out with style. Can find, but I think that something has been a very strong addition for them. Flash across, fast lane, squirting them over towards the door. Fast chase is coming in, something trying to get on top of them, trying to catch them off guard, but he's not able to find oh. the kill, and Mako with the classic swings the corner. And he says, yeah, this does more damage than your big rocket launcher. Takes him out. They just want the kill, that is for damn sure. Zest swinging the corner, will get taken down. Mako trying to line him up, Devai. Bobbing and weaving. Cuts around the corner of the turret. Now raised up and Mako. He says, nah, uh, I will not be denied. Good patience from Paper Rex. Make sure he was clear. Buzz finds the timing. Something gone. Back. Parity found in a 4v4. Mind Freak tipping back into the site, but the dark reveal from Zest is too damn good, but so is for Sigan and Ching. They find two, oh. the swing out, Buzz drags his cross aerial, oh. gets the fourth, is he on for the ace? He sends out the right click, it gets a little bit of a connection, it takes him low, the shorty in hand, swings the corner, and Buzz will get yet another ace this weekend! Less than a second is spare as the defuse comes in, DRX once again take the lead! So welcome to part four of this 12 part series, today we're going to take a look at how DRX can win Masters Tokyo. Our theme here is uh, of Stax kissing the mouse, an infamous uh, Valorant moment. Um, and uh, yeah, let's talk about DRX and their team. And of course, many of you will be uh, familiar with their team. I'm actually, uh, sorry, Termi, you've been uh, replaced here because I don't know who's going to play. I don't really know how it's going to work for them. Obviously, uh, Foxy9 was playing for a lot of the games, but then for the uh, finals, it seemed like Zest was coming in. And I don't know which roster they will actually use, whether they go back and forth. I actually think it might be their best idea to kind of swap it. I'm not normally a fan of six-man rosters, but for DRX, I actually think that that could be a good idea. But here are the different stats of all of their different players. And one thing that kind of stood out to me, actually, uh, was the DRX, in terms of first kills to first, first deaths, it seems aren't doing that great. Foxy9 had, you know, a, a pretty decent here, a plus 0.04, but everyone else was actually, you know, either even or actually dying first more than they were getting kills first, which I did find uh, a bit peculiar for obviously a team that for most of the season had dominated VCT Pacific. In terms of DRX's play style, actually I feel like a lot of people will be somewhat familiar with DRX's play style, uh, and I think that this round from Fracture in the Grand Final is a good example of it here, uh, where they're going to start off uh, with a bit of a, a defaulty look, they're going to come and start towards B main and kind of take some of this early control send even a fade haunt here as well it is an eco here for paper rex so they're just trying to you know see if this aggression is basically coming out there um and you'll see after this kind of initial take of B main uh they then uh, send the fade back uh, towards our brim here and they're just going to check that basically you know no pressure is coming out here very common setup here for just a killjoy you know with the Tori watching both ways just alone, right? You know, just, just kind of waiting for any aggression in there. They send out a Prowler here. A smoking reaction comes from Paper Rex. But now they decide to come for their exec. And of course, one thing we know about DRX execs as uh, they start to group up here and come towards B main is, of course, that they are known for, you know, some of these execs and having, you know, perfect utility usage that, you know, just destroys opponents and then going from there. And we'll see, you know, a decent example of that here. See, when the strike does come through, Nightfall looking to cut them across. Something able to get out in front of it, so will not be noted by this. The Prowler goes in onto the hunt. Fast lane up over the top of Forsaken, gonna be taken down as oh. RB. Oh. I mean, that's just a classic maneuver from him. Slides in the instant headshot. So that there is a good example of DRX taking a sight. And then another thing that DRX, as they enter this 5v3, something that, again, I think they are pretty decently known for, is, you know, their discipline and kind of, you know, everyone staying in line, no one kind of, you know, going off on their own. And when DRX, you know, are playing on at their best, you know, it will look something like this, right? It will look something where... 
you know, everyone's just got these crossfires. Everyone knows where they're supposed to be. Everyone's in the right spot. Everyone's just checking for the, like, you know, everyone's doing the right thing. And uh, in this instance, you know, we will see them peek out eventually, you know, once the kind of time is already gone and now they're just trying to hunt down these weapons, you know, and ultimately Jing uh, will get the final kill here and, and manage to survive. But we see a good example of DRX, the kind of early default into an exec that is very hard to stop and then into kind of a disciplined, uh, structured post plan. And as we mentioned before, this is kind of a six-player roster. Now, uh, we saw in the grand final, you know, Zest come back in for Foxy Knight. I don't know if that is what will happen for Masters Tokyo. Maybe Foxy will play again. I don't know. I personally feel like they'd be better off actually with a six-man roster, as I alluded to earlier, basically because I think Arby's Neon is so good that on, on maps where you could play Neon, so like Fracture, maybe even Lotus, if they ever brought that out, I feel like, you know, they should bring back in Zest and, you know, go with the Neon, because I think that that gives them an, an advantage because Arby's Neon is, is just so good uh, on those maps. But on maps where, you know, you aren't going to be playing Neon, um, I, I, I feel like Foxy might be the better choice. But who am I to say? They probably know better than me, ultimately. Um, but we did still see, uh, even though we've got Buzz on Jet, you know, and he's going back into a new role, we did still see moments like this where, you know, he can still have a big impact. Operator, but tucked into the corner. The Cabbage's catch! Jing gonna be tagged down low. Showstopper up over the top. He's completely blind and not quite gonna be able to get the hit. Counter swing in from Buzz. It's a point blank shot across with the Operator. Do they read his position? The answer is no. He finds another. Oh, catch over the oh, side. Oh, Buzz gets the third. How does he get away with it? He will get the fourth to finish him and get the RX on the board. What movement? What reactions from Buzz? But now let's talk about DRX's defense side. And for this, we're going to take a look at the very next round after that stacks like hero play there, because I feel like that's a good example sometimes of what DRX can need for their defense side. We'll see in the stats that their attack sides tend to be a lot better than some of their defense sides. Because I feel like they do play a little passive. They don't always fight for the most aggressive space uh, in general. And sometimes I think they can, you know, whoever's anchoring that site, they can rely somewhat on them going hero mode. But something else that they are good at here on the defensive side is retakes. And we'll see that in this round as Paper Rex are basically just going to storm up here um, and uh, go for a fast exec. And RB is going to end up alone on the back site. And he's going to manage to get a kill and we'll end up in a 4v4. But from there... You'll see we end up with a really, really, you know, nice retake from DRX. And I feel like that's something that, honestly, I think they could play into a little bit more. That, you know, once you're on the retake, you essentially become the attacking side again. And that is where I feel like DRX kind of thrive, you know, with some of their utility combos and whatnot. You see RB ends up in a really bad situation here. But then after this point, uh, you know, when we get this retake, you'll see we've got, uh, you know, essentially a flank coming in here. We're coming in from all three directions. And so we've kind of got Paper X, you know, trapped within the site here. So now let's take a look at how DRX deal with it. Hold it there for Forsaken. It's knocked down to 68. Planted. The drone, the check. Mind Freak noted the ping coming across. He drops down to love to try to stay alive. But that is going to be the fragment now dropped in from Stacks. Util from DRX starting to work its wonders. As an old command comes across, stacks on the swing out from main, finds Forsaken, up over the top is Buzz, something coming up with an elimination, the drop down the right click, Buzz has it, stacks gets a, gets a third, and DRX will be able to string a second round together, now two to four. So now let's talk about DRX and uh, some of their team stats. You can see their map score is pretty good. But again, we can see that disparity between their attack sides and their defensive side is actually quite big uh, compared to a lot of the other teams. Uh, their pistol win rate also for a team that was so dominant in kind of the regular season, I was expecting a much higher pistol win rate from, uh, from DRX as well. So maybe that is uh, something that, you know, they could potentially work on because a lot of teams going to Tokyo obviously you know are some of the best teams so they have a pretty high pistol win rate. In terms of their best maps they've actually been 100% uh, thus far on Split and Pearl. They did lose to Paper Rex uh, but for the most part they've been very clean on that map as well and very good. Their worst maps I mean they were forced to play Lotus uh, against Paper Rex and looked like they had literally never played it ever and uh, Bind as well is a, is a weak point where they can't seem to find the right comp necessarily for them um, and uh, you know they have been struggling on that map as well. In terms of their map pool, yeah, they have uh, been permabanning Lotus, and actually that was the only map that they didn't pick uh, during uh, the uh, VCT Pacific season as well. Most of the picks coming on Ascent, uh, but actually every single map was at least picked once other than uh, other than uh, Lotus as well. In terms of their comps as well, they are a very meta team, uh, you know, across a, a bunch of different maps. They're kind of playing pretty close to the meta on pretty much every single map, if not just the meta comp as well. 
And in terms of their agent picks as well, uh, this is kind of weird where, you know, we've seen for a lot of the other teams, it's, you know, they have some heavy, heavy favorites and some agents that, you know, comparatively to others, they just don't pick. But for DRX, other than, you know, they do like to play Harbor Viper, but honestly, a lot of that, I think, comes from playing quite a bit of Pearl in general. They're kind of on meta, you know, there's, there's a lot of yellows and light greens here. Uh, comparatively to a lot of other teams, so uh, I did find that pretty interesting as well, uh, that they, they pretty much are, are kind of just with the meta a lot. So how do DRX win Masters Tokyo? Well, it's going to come down to a combination of things, I think, where, you know, we're getting stuff like this, where RB's going into a stunned, flashed opponent or whatever, ultimately he does get traded there. But this round will also show us individuals potentially stepping up as well in situations like they end up in this one, where they end up in a 2v4 but manage to win the round. And uh, I, I bring up this game, you know, back from lock-in in specifically because it reminded me of this game was 6-6 at the half. And I remember people saying like, hey, 6, you know, louder in this game, they got a chance. And I remember saying on my stream during this game, like, it's DRX attack side fracture. This game is over, you know. DRX got six on defense on fracture. It's over. You can win pistol round. You can win the bots. It doesn't matter. You'll still lose. Um, and that's, I think, the confidence that maybe I wouldn't have in DRX right now, you know, in terms of some of their performances and whatnot. And so not only do I need to see them kind of, you know, up their game a little in terms of maybe, you know, some of the, the new ideas coming in and stuff like that, you know, because when DRX will run something completely new on you, it, te it tends to work pretty well. But I also need to see from them the individual level performance as well, kind of step up from, you know, players maybe like Stacks, like RB, uh, you know, coming into like a, a prime sort of form or whether they play Foxy9 or Zest2, whoever, you know, we need to see individuals play well as well, like we do here from Buzz, where they do end up in a 2v4 and, you know, it's not an easy situation to win. Buzz is on the site here alone against four people, but he manages to kill two, right? And that gives Mako a chance. And then between the, the Brim Molly lineup and uh, the ult here, he's just sitting you know, just the most uh, scummy way to win a round ever, uh, you know, they managed to win this round and win the game. This is how I think DRX need to play to be able to win Masters Tokyo.